protest. As you can see behind me, uh, this is the gate of the Israeli embassy, and uh, the numbers have dwindled. Uh, I'd say about a quarter of what we saw earlier today uh, are left here in terms of demonstrators. These are the hardcore demonstrators that uh, I think might end up staying here until quite late into the evening. Um, I just have a slight update from Hassan Ghani's family. Uh, we understand that unofficially the family has been told that uh, no British nationals have been killed in this attack. So we have some solace in the fact that um, I think it's fairly confirmed that Hassan is probably okay. And and the other British national as, uh, nationals as well. But obviously we can't say the same for the other uh, Turkish nationals and others who have been killed in this attack. Um, just to, as you can see behind me, the uh, Naturi Karta group are here. They turn up at uh, just about every pro-Gaza, anti-Israel protest that takes place in London. They're very committed as a group. And we're going to talk to Rabbi Beck about uh, what it is that brought them onto the street today. Rabbi Beck, you probably woke up like the rest of us, and saw the images uh, from uh, the open waters outside uh, Palestine, uh, these boats being attacked, uh, some 600, 700 civilians under threat from Israel. How did it make you feel that yet again we're seeing these scenes unfold before us? Oh, it makes us feel very terrible. I wake up today in the morning, I see the news. I can't believe myself. I shame to go out on the, on the streets because they're doing all in our name, in the name of Jews. I cry. I don't know what to say. I do, I try, the most what I can do is to come out in the street and to speak what's the true Judaism in the true way of the Torah. The true Judaism is mercy, the true Judaism is compassion. The Torah say not to kill, the Torah say not to steal from people. The Zionist people are killing, they are killing today, you can see they're killing innocent people, unarmed people. They, what, what are the people doing? They're just coming to help, they didn't come with weapons, they're just coming to help other people with food in the coming to kill. It's unbelievable, it's, unbe it's unbelievable. I can't accept it. Now, your opinion, is it a minority opinion within the Jewish community here in Britain? I mean, we have Jews for Justice for Palestinians and other small groups, but I'm sure you've come under attack for your views. We are speaking in behalf of the Orthodox Jewish community, not of the people who are not Orthodox. I can't speak about them. So, of course, the majority of unorthodox Jews is against Zionism. But from Orthodox Jews looking like me, Hasidic Jews, uh, most of them are against the State of Israel in principle. It's some levels, not everybody's in the same degree. But if you come in our area, in Stanford Hill, it's many thousands of Jewish people there, hundreds of institutes, you won't find even one Israeli flag. The, the Israeli Independent Day is never celebrated. Uh, the opposite, in many places they're burning the, the Israeli flag. In, in my school, I'm a, in a school where our children Every year, we're burning the Israeli flag for all the children to show that these are the real enemies of Jews. They are the real enemies of God. They are real enemies of a whole humanitarian. Now, can I ask you, uh, one of the commentators earlier said that it's up to the people within Israel to do something to make their government stop behaving the way it has uh, thus far behaved. What is your message and what can Jews from within Israel do? Uh, to convince their governments. I'm just going to move on to Rabbi Jacob. Jacob, what do you have to say about that? Well, I think it's, uh, unfortunately, the so-called Israeli public are completely blind by their own propaganda for many years, 60 years on already, brainwashed, blind, and they, in a way, poisoned as well by this racism. And we believe, we believe the opposite. The help can only come from international community, from maybe Jews in a... Jews in the, in the Jews diaspora Jews rather than the Israeli Jews because because they are completely blind. So we believe on the contrary, we have to all stand up in an international community to stand up for, for the sake of for the sake of us Jews as well as for the sake of Palestinians to stand up for justice and peace. But I must also add today that even in Palestine, it's many thousands of Jews who try as much as they can to refuse the country. They didn't take any um, um, public funds from the government in their boycott the voids. They didn't go to the elections. And they try as far as they can to go against the country. My father, my example, my, I born in Palestine. My whole family coming from there. My father was in Palestine. He was many, many times in the Israeli prison. Many, two, this. He coming from Palestine. He was many times in the 
in prison, beating by the, by the Israeli government very many times. His father coming from Palestine also was maybe more in prison than at home. It is, it's many, many people there against the government, but, you know, they have the power, they have the media, even here they have the media, uh, they haven't got any power. But we try and we have to do what we can in Palestine and outside Palestine, even today's day. Now, the last few weeks, many, many Jewish people are beaten there in the prisons. Did you know something of that? No, nobody, you know, I can promise you, because the media ignore it completely, completely. Now tell me, how, what is your response to how the British government has reacted by saying that, well, we said that it was unsafe uh, uh, through sort of uh, trying to break the siege. Um, the British government has said that we, we, you know, we told the convoy not to go. This is an unsafe way to try and enter Gaza. And in fact, you know, some of the professionals who are on these boats, uh, many of them couldn't get insurance for their equipment, for their own lives because uh, this is an area that uh, uh, practically every uh, government advises people not to enter. Uh, so what has been, what, what is your reaction to the way the British government has reacted? Well, we are very, uh, very saddened the way this reaction, instead of condemning this, uh, this piracy in international waters and, and uh, condemning it properly, they say, well, we told you about it. I mean, these people are, have risked their life. They are very brave to help people in Gaza, to help children who are undernourished. And just instead of instead of condemning the siege, condemning condemning what happened, well, we told you about it. This is this is not very helpful at all. We are very uh, sad about it. Thank you very much, Rabbi Jacob. Well, that's it from uh, London. Um, like I said, we had an update from uh, Hassan Ghani's uh, family that uh, unofficially we're being told that no British nationals were killed in the raid that took place this morning. Um, we don't know exactly who they are, who's been critically injured. Uh, a number of people, uh, scores of people have been injured and they're uh, in quite a bad state in hospitals in Tel Aviv. Uh, we don't know who's in a hospital uh, at the moment, but we just know that there have been no fatalities when it comes to the Brits. Uh, obviously, we can't say the same for the 1920. Uh, we don't know how many uh, Turks and other nationalities have been killed. Thank you very much, Farina Alam, there from London. We're going to cross on over right away. To